and I threw up in my mask. I had to throw away my mask, but then part of it dribbled onto the jacket that I borrowed from Melody. I don't know if you can see it. It's like right here. Zindi, move all on! Down. This is going to be a combination of a reading vlog and a travel slash lifestyle vlog because you're going to see me read five books over the span of a month and a half and whatever books I read, I would let it influence what I would do in real life. These are five books that are a variety of genres like fantasy, horror, romance, even memoirs. I'll talk about my impressions of these books too and hopefully maybe one of them will interest you because if so and if you're looking to discover even more books beyond this vlog, you might also be interested in checking out Galatea, which is the sponsor of today's video. They are an app where you can read hundreds of original stories with an exclusive catalog of best-selling authors. There's over 2,000 books on the platform, many of which are the same genres that I mentioned. What I really like about them is how accessible they are because there are even audiobooks that are provided for most of these stories and they're translated into all major languages. It's getting pretty popular too because they have over like a million monthly active users from almost like 200 countries and I believe there's over 400 published authors so it's been really popping off and if you're into romance they have this really popular story called The Arrangement where this broke 23 year old virgin enters this marriage contract with a billionaire playboy so you already know it's got all the tropes bad boy arranged marriage, enemies to lovers, and of course there's gonna be smut. So if that sounds like it's up your alley, or if you wanna check out the other stories that they have, I will have the link to download the Galatea app in my description below. Now let's dive into other stories. I'm gonna tell you about the five books that I read and how they influence my real life. First book that I read was Ferryman by Claire McFall. This is a young adult fantasy romance that I picked up solely for the cover. However, it ended up being quite fitting because the book starts off on a gray and rainy day where the main character takes a train to go to Scotland. Since I live in America and we have a terrible transportation system, I unfortunately could not easily take a train to Scotland. So instead, I took a train from Manhattan to Long Island, which ended up being very fitting because by chapter two, a passenger complains about how expensive the tickets are, which which is a sentiment that I understood too well. Because I paid $25 just to go to Long Island for a day. I did not expect commuting to be that expensive, but fuck it, we're already committing. Besides, the main character doesn't even end up in Scotland. Her train crashes and she becomes stuck in this wasteland that's haunted by wraiths searching for human souls. The character also finds out that whatever she sees in the wasteland is controlled by her own thoughts. So because we have this spooky atmosphere that can be controlled by ourselves, some folks and I stayed over at a friend's house to do some pumpkin decorating. Very much Halloween, which should be just year round, honestly. Everyone made beautiful pumpkins, including this guy making a freaking painting of the Titanic. Well, I just did a really messy paint job, but you know what? I think it really is indicative of my own headspace. And then one of the pumpkins came to life as a giant gay man twerking in the living room. So how's that for being haunted by a wraith? My flight leaves tomorrow. Did I finish packing? Nope. Did I clean the apartment? Nope. Instead, <laughs> I'm gonna go out and hang out with Monica and Emma and Kaylee and all the other folks and a group of people. We're gonna go to the Met Cloisters. We're gonna probably hang out all day. And I don't know what I'm gonna do when I go back home. Time management, who is she? We don't know her. For a fantasy novel about a train crash that leads the main character to a wasteland, my first night went a little too smoothly. So of course I went out again and oh boy, did this trip become way more eventful. As you know, I've been staying in New York for a while and the city truly does represent a different kind of wasteland. You got rats all over the tracks, you got people walking around in costumes, and sometimes your train can be delayed for several hours, which is exactly what happened to me. I was supposed to meet up with friends to visit the Met Cloisters and the train would just not move. Very fittingly, I also reached the part in the book where the main character felt like she could not get through this journey and that this shit seemed to last forever. Actually, most of the book was just her aimlessly wandering around with no point to it, and that definitely was my commute. Miraculously, I did make my way to the Cloisters, which is located in a park that has a big garden with medieval art and architecture. So it was just the kind of atmosphere that felt very fitting for the fairy tale and folklore aspect of the novel. 
When it was time for dinner, my friends and I went back to the city to reward ourselves with yummy food for the long journey earlier. But of course, the chaos did not end there. I was trying to head home, but could not even find my way to the train stations because all the streets were blocked off by this huge parade. There were so many damn people, and the parade itself had giant floats and people in spooky costumes. In retrospect, this did parallel how the main characters kept on having to escape from their race and demons in the wasteland, so I truly sympathize with her struggles. Finally, without giving away too much of the book, the characters do end up back in civilization by escaping the wastelands. They find themselves in these very nice clean streets with houses and front lawns, but in order to achieve that, I could not stay in New York because the city just doesn't have nice things like that. Hence, I took a flight to a new state where I could escape into the safe, peaceful calm of suburbia. I have moved to Texas and I'm already getting cozy here. According to the Fairyman book, the characters are resisting the chaos of the wasteland and they have escaped from it. Now they're on the streets and in their safe haven and for that I am translating that to suburbia because what is more comfortable and safe than the suburbs? The Airbnb that I have has like a green theme going on with it which matches the the celery man on the cover. Gotta keep the celery color scheme consistent. It really is kind of poetic tying the city of New York to the metaphor of a wasteland and trying to escape from it. I've had a blast in New York though. I'm definitely gonna come visit again, but it was time for me to move. It's also time for me to move on to a new book. I have been listening to people we meet on vacation while I've been cooking. What I found out so far about the book is that that it is about an influencer slash travel blogger and she is currently putting together a list of destinations for her to travel to which is so uncanny because I'm currently working with a travel company to put together a group trip that I will be hosting. I just took a meeting with the company and we went over the survey results that I sent out a while where I was basically gauging who would be interested in traveling with me and which country would you be interested in going since I'm pretty much open to like pretty much any country, it's more so like what is best for price accommodations for everyone. I'm looking at the itinerary for Thailand right now and it looks really good. My priorities were just like any excuses to eat, yeah. try new food. I would love to bring a plus one with me. Yeah. And we can share the hotel room too, if that makes it easier for budgeting. So far, it's looking like it's gonna be Thailand, which I think will be super fun because I have never been to Thailand before. I've actually never been to Asia other than South Korea. The main character in People We Meet on Vacation is currently going through some existential dilemma where she's realizing that she's not really content in life. The advice that her friend gave her is to start to think about the last time she was truly happy and try to go back to that place again. And she remembers that the last time she felt that way was when she was spending time with one of her best friends. It was a really good memory for her. This is a friend that she has not seen in two years. A friend that I haven't seen in two years is Chanel. The last time I hung out with her was right before COVID hit. I haven't gone to hang out with her since then because she's been in Texas and I've been in California and New York and just bopping around places. But now that I'm back in Texas, we actually live an hour away from each other. So I'm making plans to hang out with her and stay over at her place for the weekend. And I'm taking you along with me. Update, I look crusty as hell. So you know how I'm reading people we meet on vacation, right? Yeah. Oh! Her whole deal was that she was always like having fun with one of her best friends, but then they hadn't hung out in like two years. And oh, we haven't hung out in two years. Something happened two years ago in, when they were in Croatia, and that's why they haven't talked in two years. She's reading it right now too. Mm -hmm. I picked it up because she's reading it. So I was like, oh, let me let me read it it's too. It's so good. I'm it's, loving it. It's really good so far. Time to repair whatever imaginary breakup we had <laughs> and find our healing, I guess. We'll talk it out over lunch. As I continued reading the book, I noticed the author showed us the story in two timelines. One was in present day where things were really awkward with the main character's friend and the other was flashbacks from several years ago when they were besties and regularly traveling with each other. They would go to different cities, try out new restaurants, drink together, even attend family weddings together. So I decided that my time with Chanel would reflect the flashbacks where you see the good old days of these besties hanging out. Don't worry, we'll see the chaos later in present day, but that'll be for another weekend.
Okay, I'm in Chanel's empty ass apartment. I'm gonna show you like how she felt. <laughs> she was like, oh no! With her fucking ass in the air. Oh, the embarrassment! That was how slow she felt. She was like, <laughs> she was like, <gasps> like that. That was how slow. And then when her ass in the air. So <laughs> Now again, I still needed to do something reflective of the present day chapters where the character and her friend try to reconnect with another trip together. But things keep on messing up their trip. And this is where my friend Melody comes in. I've been reading People We Meet on Vacation, which I also got Melody to read. I finished this today. And she cried reading it. That means it's good. Basically, we realize we're like the main characters in the book because I'm the travel influencer going around and you're like, boring. I must be in control at all times or else I will have an aneurysm. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's it. Anyway, so to mimic the book, we are also gonna go on a trip tomorrow. We're and going on vacation. We're gonna do a road trip. We're gonna go to a pier, maybe ride some roller coasters, but overall it should be a good time. We may or may not confess our love from the past decade that we've been suppressing all this time. Yeah, that is a possibility. We'll see. <gasps> oh my god, yeah, I have one napkin. My one napkin and one taco, one taco. Melody dropped her taco on her foot. We're already starting off really bad. I feel like that's what would happen to Alex on People We Meet on Vacation. As the characters went on their trip, tons of disasters happen and the plans don't work out. Like they get a flat tire, their rental is too small, the AC is broken, they get sick. And because my life knew I was trying to mimic this book, Melody and I also ran into our own disasters. Lot update while I eat my waffles. This waffle is her one good meal of the day. <laughs> Today we took a road trip to Galveston so that we could follow what the main couple does on people we meet on vacation. And you know what? Today I really felt the dynamic of <laughs> the main characters in there. These two main characters are like total opposites from one another, but they have been friends for like over a decade, which is also similar to us. Yes. But we're very different people as well. In present day for this book, something kind of awkward happened between the two main characters. And so the main girl is like, you know what? I'm gonna do a trip with the two of us. We're gonna make things better again. That hasn't happened with us, but who knows? Well, there is the that, night is still young. There is that one TikTok that like what? I was fighting with you about in my head. Oh, oh, we actually okay, yeah. So a while back, I sent Melody a TikTok. The TikTok was someone saying, "I'm not gonna hide parts of myself. You're going to accept me for everything that I am, or like you're not gonna get nothing." And when she sent me that, my brain started like spinning out and I was like when like what's going on like what subliminal message is Cindy trying to send me like am I not accepting her like I've been meaning to bring it up to her and go like hey so like there's this one TikTok that you sent me and then she literally goes oh I just like the sentiment that was yeah. it you were just like I like the message I literally only sent you TikTok because I agreed with what the person was saying I was like yeah you know what people should just be themselves. well you could have added that <laughs> I thought that was implied from sending you the TikTok my but mind. Melody was like my oh my mind. god what does this mean? That is she saying that like I'm not accepting like who she is or whatever? <laughs> and so basically like we had fake drama in her head. Yeah. There was one sided beef going on. Yeah. But anyway, I'm so embarrassing. <laughs> it's okay because you were having a Poppy moment. I was. In the same way, Poppy's the main character of this book. So anyway, so she's like. I'm gonna put together a trip with me and Alex and we're gonna be good again. And then when they go on a trip, everything goes wrong. And she's like, nothing's going right. Yeah. I'm messing up. And he's just like so dumb with everything. Anyway, so that, so let's talk about today. <laughs> Woke up at 6 a.m. to drive for five hours to the place. And I was super hungry and sleep deprived. I was looking forward to lunch. We finally arrived at the beach. Oh, we wanted to go to the beach because this is where your mom wanted to go. My mom wanted to go to the beach. She yeah. Just, she's been wanting to for the longest time. Just come to the beach. So Melody was like, where should we eat? We should eat at Golden Corral. And I have never eaten at Golden Corral before. So yeah. I was like, okay. And then we got there. That shit was like probably one of the worst restaurants yeah. I've ever been in in my life. Like, the food made me feel so gross that I couldn't even finish it because I was afraid if I kept on eating it, like something bad would happen to me. But then yeah. also I got bad vibes from the place. All these 
Texans that yeah. did, weren't wearing their masks, yeah. a bunch of children running around, and it was buffet style too. So all the food was out there for all the grubby little children to grab onto. There's these stacks of clean plates that we could grab. I saw two plates that literally had like red sauce on top of it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh no. I saw those. <laughs> you saw those too? So because I was most sleep deprived and hangry, my body was just shutting down. Down. And then I could tell Melody was trying to like be positive about it, but I'm like, there was no saving. And we switched roles at that point. Typically, I'm Alex and you're Poppy, but at that point, I was trying so fucking hard. Yeah. I was like, let's be the giraffes. Let's do this. Let's do uh -huh. that. It was just like trying. I was trying and yeah. just, like, not having it. But that's how Alex was too. I was yeah. just like, listen, I was just not. We set out to follow the book and we fucking did. Yeah. Here's the thing. I got more. I got more. You don't even know about <laughs> No. I got more. You're going to feel bad about it, but I just want you to know right now, it's not actually a big deal. It's actually funny when we look back on it. Okay. After we checked into the hotel and then we took a nap, we were trying to figure out what to do for dinner because I wanted to do early dinner because I was still really hungry. But then Melody's sister wanted to go to the pier because it closes at nine and it had like a bunch of rides to go to. Mm -hmm. So in order to satiate my hunger, I had to shove McDonald's down my throat. And so I was quickly eating the McDonald's nuggets because I didn't want us to be late for the pier. So keep in mind, what I had was like a little bit of the nasty golden coral and the 20 chicken McNuggets that I shoved in my throat. This is going to be relevant to later, okay? Also, another thing throughout the day, I was so dehydrated. I ran out of water and there there wasn't like any water anywhere. I got so dehydrated that throughout the day I kept on like choking because like my throat would be so dry. This is relevant, okay, for what's gonna happen. Part two of story time while I eat my waffle. So we get to the fair. I'm dehydrated. I'm hungry. I'm sleep deprived. We go there. There's full of Texans, no masks, children screaming everywhere. I don't even like rides. I pay the $30 to get inside. There's all these rides that I don't wanna go on. I go on one ride, I feel sick already because of dehydration starvation and sleep deprivation. I'm choking the whole time. <laughs> At some point, this happened while you and your sister were on a ride. I was in line to try to get a tiny cup of water. And then I started choking because again, like my throat was getting really dry. And then I gotta show you what happened. I ended up throwing up. I'm gonna wash it, okay? I'm gonna wash it. Oh no, no, I'm sorry. It's not actual throw, it's just water. Cause I didn't eat anything, remember? Oh my God, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll put it away, I'll put it away. What? Oh, okay. For reference, this is Melody's jacket that I borrowed. I threw up on it, but the thing is, I was wearing my mask and I threw up in my mask. I had to throw away my mask, but then part of it dribbled onto the jacket that I borrowed from Melody. I don't know if you can see it. It's like right here. Zindy, move on. Down. <laughs> okay. And then I had to like get myself together and then return back to you and your sister because I knew if I told you what happened, you would just like freak out about it. So I was like, I'm gonna tell this later tonight so that she can just enjoy herself. And she did. And I feel like that was what was most important. I feel terrible because I I had a great time. I was literally thinking oh. <laughs> how wonderful it was. We were going around all these rides. Melly's like, look at all these lights. Look at all these rides. It's so fun. And I'm just like, <laughs> your mom and I were watching you and your sister like riding the cars and we saw that you were having fun and I was like, oh, this is a good moment for them. <laughs> so then I felt better after that. They were blast. Mm -hmm. So, oh my God, though, I cannot believe it. I'm still stuck on the jacket. I'm like, I had no idea. I knew something was off. Yeah, because yeah. Because you seemed a little off, but I was like, she would tell me. Yeah. And I guess you are. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I am telling you, but I knew not to tell you at that moment because I didn't want to ruin your fun. After we finally got dinner at 9 p.m., we got to the Jumbo Diner. It was really cute. I liked the wall decorations. I ordered the Jumbo, but it was kind of like, okay. So then I ordered the waffle on the side because I just wanted one good meal <laughs> for the day. And it, they took like forever to yeah. get us the waffle. For context, we got there at nine. She ordered it at 9.30. And then when did you get it? At 10.10. They closed at 10, they gave me the waffle after they closed. This only matches the chaos of today, really. Basically, they gave me the waffle after they already closed. They forgot to charge me. We could have walked out without paying anything, but I was the idiot that reminded them that they didn't give me the bill. All in all, I feel like in terms of replicating the book, we did a pretty good job. Yeah, I mean, we, we definitely understood the assignment. I don't know what to say. I'm just so shocked. I'm like, I'm just like stunned. I Tomorrow we're going back to the beach, just so you're aware. Mentally prepare for that. The things we do for love, Cindy. As long as your mom is happy, that's all I want. my own book. As 
we wrapped up this weekend, I am glad to report that the rest of the trip went by smoothly. It goes to show that just like Emily Henry's book, no matter what disasters you go through, as long as you love someone, it's worth the chaos and you'll eventually get a happy ending. Frankly, any day where I don't vomit is what I would call a happily ever after. Now, as you saw about a minute ago, I started reading a new book at the beach, The Keeper of Night, and I decided that would be the next book that would control my life. I got this from Book of the Month, and when it first came out, they advertised it as an Instagram post, which I cannot find for the life of me, so they might have deleted it, but I swear I saw this when the book came out. Basically, they do these posts where it's like, if you like this activity, then you should read this book. There was a post themed around musical instruments, and it said, if you play the cello, then you should read The Keeper of Night. And that is why for this weekend, Chanel and I attended an orchestra concert. The book itself did not end up having any musical instruments, but I am still counting this because I swear that Instagram post once existed. What the book is actually about though, is this fantasy where a Shinigami girl collects souls. She goes on this quest in order to be accepted into the underworld, and this quest involves finding and eliminating three demons. It's based on Japanese mythology, so it was fun learning about all these different demons. However, obviously there are no demons for me to visit in real life, at least none that I know of. But to pay homage to this Asian-inspired fantasy where the girl essentially has three checkpoints during her quest, Chanel and I embarked on our own quest where we visit three local businesses owned by people of color. So this was like our own little adventure, hunting down all these cute shops, like this family-owned antique market called Knickknacks, this new bookstore that opened called Oak Cliff, where we supported them by buying some books, and my favorite discovery, the Rose Garden. This is owned by a nonprofit that provides transitional rehabilitation for women re-entering the community from prison, especially those who were affected by substance abuse and domestic violence. The owners were so nice, their dog was so adorable. They handmade a bunch of denim products, like I could not believe there's a freaking denim couch that exists. Anyway, they're awesome. I'll link all the businesses in my description if anyone lives in Dallas and is interested in checking out any of these shops. Today was so much fun. As you can tell from the vlog footage, I always love exploring new places, especially when they have a bunch of cute stores that are in the same area, and even more especially when they're well decorated. And I loved that bookstore that we went to so much that I wanted to talk about them on Instagram and just try to like promote them and advertise them. And then they reached out to me and they were just being super nice. Apparently after Chanel and I left the bookstore, the two workers that were there who are actually the dad and the son who were talking to the wife who started the bookstore about us. And I was like, oop. I do love supporting small businesses, but I also think they pay extra close attention when they see you filming in their store. Cause they're like, why is this person trying to film my shit? I have repented by trying to promote them and giving them clout. That is how I have paid my penance. I bought two books from them, this memoir called Untamed is about a woman who realizes that she's gay. And I just felt like that was a little bit relevant to some shit that has been going on in my personal life. And then the second book that I got was Comfort Me With Apples. I might try to read this book maybe after The Keeper of Nights. Maybe the vlog will continue. Maybe I will be the one comforted with apples. Just kidding, the next book that I ended up reading was Somebody's Daughter. This is a memoir about the author's childhood, her family, and figuring out her identity, especially in relation to her absent father. She talks a lot about her family and her memories with them in the book. And though a lot of it was traumatic, she did speak fondly of her memories with her younger brother, who was named RC. And this has provided me a great excuse to spend a weekend dedicated to entertaining and bonding with one of my internet friends, RC, who was visiting in town. We met through book Twitter, so of course our first activity involved checking out a bookstore literally called Recycle Bookstore. This place is huge because it used to be an opera house and it has so many cool vintage stuff, even beyond books like records and CDs. The decorations also had a lot of character to them. We spent quite a while here and I do think it's fitting to somebody's daughter because the author talks a lot about being a very avid reader and how she devoured books throughout her childhood and how she was super into writing as she grew up. RC and I are also aspiring writers, so we spent the first day just being inspired and nerdy together. Just updating for the vlog. Yay! RC, this is your weekend. It is my weekend. Oh my god! I just turned 22! Why do you look like Jake Gyllenhaal? Oh my god, not bad. <laughs>
Avenge Somebody's Daughter. It was a really short book. I was able to read most of it during my bus ride to see RC and Chanel in Denton. Definitely a very self-reflective story as the author contemplates her relationships with her family and how it's not always perfect, but there's still that tenderness despite all of the flaws and the trauma. And I think that's all we can really do. It was the perfect size book to bring along with me for that weekend because it was so light and easy to carry around. I'm really glad her brother ended up having the same name as RC because I was able to loop him into my shenanigans. We had a really fun time. We caught up with each other over a text after we finished hanging out and RC and Chanel were saying that this is one of the most fun weekends that they had in a while. For me, I have been so busy with work. I obviously haven't shown any of it in my vlog because I'm only showing the fun times, but realistically, my everyday life in between the weekends has been so stressful. Work has just been super hectic. I have been working late. My sleep schedule is all messed up. I've been so stressed and irritable when something goes wrong at work. And these weekends have been very helpful in and reminding myself that I have a life outside of this and that I'm capable of having fun and touching grass. So it's very much needed. The next book that I'm gonna read for my last weekend in Texas is Comfort Me With Apples. This is one of the books that I got from that cute little indie bookstore and it is also a very tiny book. So we'll see how this determines my weekend. The cover is very pretty. I'm imagining that I'll probably be able to finish this in one sitting. It's a horror novel, so that should be interesting. Thing. I'll take you along to next weekend and show you how it goes with this book. For my final weekend, Melody accompanied me on this journey to replicate the book. This turned out to be a horror novella about a wife who is extremely dedicated to her husband, even though he seems to be kind of shady. So what better way to show my own dedication to this book than to get a tattoo for it? I got my tattoo. It's a very simple leaf design. And this tattoo matches the book of this weekend, which is Comfort Me With Apples, because it has a bunch of leaves on the cover, which means I have to get a leaf tattoo. Boom. Of course, I had to do something related to apple still. So after dinner, Melody and I got apple crepes as a way to top the night off with something sweet. And then the last thing that I did was visit the Foundry District. This is a really vibrant neighborhood with tons of murals, but the highlight for me was Doc's Record and Vintage. This is a record store that also has a whole shopping section for clothes and furniture and other vintage items. I'm not even someone who buys records, but I wanted to check out this place because it's just decorated so weirdly and you don't know what's going Going on, which was basically my experience reading Comfort Me With Apples because it was so bizarre and vague. The main character finds a dismembered finger at some point, so naturally I had to gravitate towards the dismembered heads around the store. And I also found a weird gray mannequin in the corner for no reason. And this definitely matches the book for reasons I cannot say due to spoilers. But the shop definitely has a lot of character and is super unique, just like the atmosphere of the book. And that pretty much concludes my vlog. I read a lot of books, I did a lot of things because of those books, and it was just cool to explore new shops and neighborhoods. Thanks for coming along with me. Go ahead and unsubscribe. Bye.